free throws and three-point shots, right? And nothing else, no mid-range. It's just like in baseball when they heard saber metrics years ago, Billy Bean, Moneyball, they thought it means on-base percentage. It's not what it means. It means looking at playing efficiently. So how do you do that? Well, it depends how what the rules are, how the game is being called, what kind of shots are contested and by how much, right? They're giving Simmons a 15-footer in. If, if they're just going to give that to you, take it. If, forget about a three-point shot for a second. If Simmons just shot a mid-range, he'd be impossible. But he doesn't. Everything comes in the paint. And, and nevertheless, he's a great player, a legitimately great player. I thought he was the best defender in the league last year when he was healthy, up to the point he got hurt. I thought he was the defensive player of the year. He's six foot ten, guys, and he's a great defender, an energetic defender. And on offense, he's created more open looks from three than anyone since he entered the league. That's actually a fact. And he can do everything, everything except shoot. If he adds a shot to his game, how do you stop Philadelphia? Let me tell you something, man. <clears throat> I'm a huge fan of Ben Simmons. I think he's a jump shot away from being LeBron James part two. This brother 6'10", got a nasty handle, great basketball IQ, tremendous passing skills, an elite defender. He is something special. But that doesn't mean that he's immune to being ignorant from time to time. And to sit up there and to say with a straight face, it's not about shooting, it's about winning. Well, damn it, how do you win? You need to be able to shoot the ball. Now, Kendrick Perkins, you'll appreciate the point that I'm a proud. I, I think you'll appreciate the point that I'm about to bring up. And please put me on that screen because I want to look at Kendrick Perkins when I'm saying this to him. Somebody like you, Kendrick Perkins, if you don't care about shooting, I appreciate that. You were an enforcer. You defended, you rebounded, you made sure guys came into the lane, they was going to feel your presence. You understand what I'm saying? You know, the Paul Pierce's of the world and the KG's of the world and the Ray Allen's of the world, you know, and to a lesser degree, the Rondo's of the world, they can focus on playing together, scoring, et cetera, et cetera. Not that you weren't playing together, but what I'm trying to say is that scoring wasn't necessarily your responsibility. But in today's NBA, where you see the success of teams predicated on guard play and being formidable on the offensive end of the floor so you are a threat and you're not playing four on five basketball when you have the ball in your hands is something very significant now i'm not talking about ben simmons being a marksman and all of a sudden jacking up threes or anything like that i'm trying to say work on that element of your game where at least you're a threat and they have to preoccupy themselves with you on the perimeter instead of stepping back into the lane and daring you to take a jump shot. Those are the kind of things that will help elevate the potency of the Sixers offense, which could ultimately doing, lead to them doing exactly what you say it's all about, which is to win basketball games. And that's all I'm saying about Ben Simmons. Be that threat. Work on that one element of your game because everything else is there. Well, well, I have to disagree with you guys, and I got to roll with Ben Simmons. I don't see nothing that he said was wrong. He's, he's saying long as we're playing winning basketball, and to your point, Max, he's 6'10", 250 pounds. He's a, posi a position a posi – positionless player. He don't have a position. He's not a guard. He's not a forward. He could play all positions. So with that being said, how about put him on the low block? The man of double team. He has nice post moves on the low block. He got a right hand hook. He has a left hand hook. He can face you up and take you off the dribble. He's, a, uh, he's an athletic finisher around the basket. How about putting them in high pick and rolls where you have him uh, going up to set the screen, rolling to the basket, and you have Joel B rolling to replace the pick and pop for the jump shot because he's a better shooter. It's ways to implement Ben Simmons into the offense to make Philly offense better without him shooting the damn basketball. Now, when he is pushing Problem. the ball, how about the only time that a lot of the times when he when he when he is pushing the ball, he's pushing it in transition. So he's thinking getting downhill anyway. And if you come and collapse, like you said, he's great at kicking it out. So I'm with Ben Simmons. He don't have to shoot the ball in order for the 76ers to be successful because he brings so much value in other areas. That that it well, could make success, up for. Perk? And Come by on, the Perk. way, like I said, he he's 6'10", 
250 pounds. Put him on the block. He got nice post moves. If they come and double, kick it out. You got shooters around you now. They have another guy and you who can just do go that. from there. They have another guy who can do that named Joel Embiid. Here's the problem. He could do it, but do he want to do success. it? When you say he, he, they can have success, that's one thing. Of course, they're going to have success, but how do you measure success for a team with two transcendent players in their primes and a GM now like Maury who's surrounding them with shooting and efficient scoring and guys who can defend? Success should be a championship. They're not going to do it if, if Simmons doesn't shoot for one important reason. They will put him in the dunker spot as they have in the playoffs. You want Simmons with the ball in his hand. And the problem is a guy with that kind of court vision, passing ability, handles at his size, everything. He's like a basketball genius. He needs the ball in his hands. You want the ball in his hands, but you can't put him in that position if he can't shoot at all in the playoffs when those paint points aren't so easy to come by. Well, listen, Max. I, listen, you, 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 you know what, Doc? Uh, well, let me say this to MKP, and then I'll give it to you. Number one, I get where you're coming from, Max. It's just hard to listen to you since you didn't even want Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid to coexist. But that's a different story for another day. What I would say to you, Kendrick Perkins, is this. <laughs> Your basketball IQ is too high for you to sit up there and say what you just said when you consider the competition that he's going to have to go against. Miami, think about it. You picked Miami to beat Milwaukee, as did I. We both picked them to beat Milwaukee. Max did it, but you and I picked Miami to beat Milwaukee. Why did we make that selection? Because we saw the marksman that they had all over the place, and we knew that shooting would neutralize whatever the Greek freak threw in their direction. When we fantasize about what Brooklyn's going to be, it's because of what they can do from the perimeter. So I'm saying to you, yeah, they're going to win their share of regular season games. They'll win 50-plus games. They'll get to the postseason. We get that. But when we talk about championship KP, if Ben Simmons, and I know you're talking about him scoring in the post as opposed to the perimeter, but I'm thinking about the ball being in his hands, him being able to run that offense because his IQ is so high and his ball handling and passing skills are so sublime. I'm asking you, KP, are you telling me that if, Ken, if Ben Simmons doesn't develop a perimeter shot, it's not going to be that important to come out of the East? No, it's not. It's not. I watched Doc Rivers put Rajon Rondo in the position where early in his career he was at, he was just like Ben Simmons when we won the championship. Where he that he did not take jump shots. Doc had him. He would tell them, "Hey, if they sagging off of you, Rondo, take up but the space and the attack postseason? them still, and then drive it." Huh? Did no, he, he did the not the first season, not the first. No, not the first year that we won the championship. Doc used to have Paul Rondo Pierce double flooding to the... on that team. Listen Paul to what I'm saying, Max. Team. Max, I'm making Max, I get all that. I'm telling you what Doc did to make Rondo effective because they wasn't guarding him because he wasn't shooting the ball. What I'm saying was he used to have Rondo double flooding in the paint. I would duck in, then clear out, take a man with me, and Rondo would cut right in the middle of the paint and get an easy layup. Those are the type of things that Doc Rivers could draw up for Ben Simmons. That's what I'm trying to tell you, Max, and it's other Jake ways to nice value player. and get the most Simmons out of him so that Philly could be successful without him worrying about taking a damn jump shot. Shake Milton's a nice player. If Simmons doesn't learn how to shoot at least the mid-range, Shake Milton will have the...